Welcome to this edition. And uh, Darby Root, the economist, joins me now. He's also a lecturer at Gibbs. Who do we blame, Darby Root, for the financial crisis? Greed. Greed, Greed. of course. The bad guys. Wall Street. That's Insufficient fine. regulation. It really depends who you ask. Of course. Because I'm asking you, and you okay. don't believe that for a moment, do you? There are three sets of reasons. The one is the emotional set of reasons. And then you get the technical reasons why we went through this financial crisis and still going through the financial crisis, the one day in, the one day out mm. sort of thing. And the last one, for fundamental reasons. Now, the, the emotional reasons, and you can hear this all the time, you get it from politicians, and you get it from Kusat and so on. It's greed, it's the bad guys at Wall Street, uh, they wanted to make them more, too much money, they paid themselves too much. Now, that's one reason. Which, of course, is a lot of nonsense. It's not nonsense. Greed is a good thing. Greed, gre <laughs> greed leads to the optimal allocation of resources. The, the opposite of greed is to be wasteful. M Mr. Mr. Gecko, um, you remember the movie, Greed is Good, of course, in yes. Wall Street. But surely there is a fundamental, we've got an attitude issue. Is the attitude issue not being at the very base of the financial crisis, the greed issue? I can it tell you the greed. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of greed, and that will bring me actually to the second reason for the okay. financial crisis. It was the greed of the poor people. Beg your pardon? Yes, certainly. Because there are institutions in the United States called Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, for example, and their job is to provide loans, the so-called subprime loans, to people that can't get money somewhere else. People with bad, bad credit records, people without jobs, they will go to Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, essentially, and get a loan there. That's greed. That That's was, greed that was, of people that can't afford that. That was not greed. That was good politics. Bill Clinton said everybody in the United States should so own the home. Happened? It was the American dream. So what happened? They it pushed was, house prices up to unrealistic levels. Now they've got debt. It was bad politics, not necessarily greed. It was greed of the poor people. That's the <laughs> second reason, of course, and that's political interference in the financial mm. markets. And I think Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae is a good example. By the way, these government guaranteed loans, they put into basket with a stamp, says government guarantee. You take it to S&P uh, &P and they put another stamp, AAA on that. Then you sell it off to a bank, government guarantee and AAA. It's Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae get the money all over again and do the whole thing all over again. And that was really, that's the subprime. But that, epi that epitomizes greed because stupidity on the one hand, so bad politics, which ensured it's that bad politics. it was a shocking okay. politics to ensure that everybody owned their own home even though they couldn't afford it. Then bad politics to rubber stamp the, the, the debt instruments and shocking greed to go and resell these to get these off your own balance sheet to spread the risk. If you were an MD at a bank five years, ten years ago and you didn't participate in this party and I was a shareholder, I would have fired you. Because it was a party going on. Of course you have to make money and they make zillions. But that's greed. That's not greed. That's what you're supposed to do in a free market <laughs> system. No, but that is the, but precisely the free market system went haywire. No, there's nothing wrong with greed as long as you don't break the rules. I'm not talking about morality. That's something else. Mm. Greed is the optimal allocation of resources. They, I don't, can't find another word for it. Mm. Greed sounds nice. Let me get to the third set of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, uh, that is uh, insufficient regulation, for example, technical reasons or derivatives uh, or CDOs, you know, all those sort of things. Insu I think uh, uh, insufficient reserves at the banks. That's another very good technical excuse that is being used, which of course all that is just a lot of nonsense because we've never seen so much regulation on the financial markets. We've never understood risk as well as we do today. The reasons why the world went through financial crisis is because in, uh, the monetary policy was far too loose, interest rates were too low globally, they were uh, too much, um, uh, too loose fiscal policy, I mean the Greeks is an excellent example yes. and many other ones, and of course there was too much interference in, a, in, a, in the workings of the economy by politicians. And the result of that was, I always compare it to two parents, the one parent was buying the booze, the other one was encouraging the kids to drink, is it the kids fault? I don't think so. I mean, if you're an MD at the bank, of course you must participate in the party. But you're only participating in the party because you're being incentivized to participate in the party because you were greedy. Because your shareholders want a proper return because on their they investments. Agree. Because they are greedy. Oh, don't tell me, please, for the last 10 years that we were getting proper returns. If you're getting returns in excess of 25%, those aren't proper returns. Those aren't, aren't long-term sustainable returns. Of course it's not long-term sustainable. But it, of course not. I agree with you absolutely. But, but what can you do? Because you're getting th all these sort of things are being thrown at you from the politicians. Very, very low monetary policy or interest rates. Very expansionary fiscal stance. It's coming to you all the way. What must you do? Of course you must participate in the party. It's the fault of the politicians. The interesting thing is now, so debt mm. is the result of all this. Yes. Now, now, how are you going to fix this? And it's very interesting to see how the Ameri Americans are trying to fix their problems and how the Europeans are trying to fix it. The Americans, they're making more debt. Yes. Nuts. They, they, they are printing money like crazy. crazy. 
while the Europeans, they're cutting back on state expenditure. I mean, I think uh, the Greeks is a wonderful example, and it's very painful, of course. Sure. So who's going to... Uh, Who is going to win this race? I, my suspicion is going to be the Europeans. In the short term, the Americans are going to be relatively successful because we see some economic activity mm. there and if you just push a lot of money into a system you will get some economic activity mm. a lot of that money flows back to the Federal Reserve and a lot of that money flows out of the US economy as well pushing up commodity prices supporting emerging currencies and things like that but it must lead to inflation yes. which will undermine allocation yeah. of resources and low economic growth the Europeans in the short term because of cutting back on their budgets and things the economy will go through recessions, will go through very slow economic growth initially. As soon as they've repaired or at least made some adjustments to their balance sheets, things will start improving, but it's going to take a very long time in any event. Yeah. I think the Europeans will be better off sooner, but the, the pain will be more in the short term. But uh, let's write them off. The Europeans and Americans, the next 10, 20 years, they're not going to go anywhere. It's going to be the Chinese century. And the Chinese century, and we want to attach ourselves to that Chinese century? Not a bad idea. Not only the Chinese. Remember, the Chinese just surpassed the Americans in terms of energy consumption. Yes. Um, and they are growing like crazy. The Indians, and we're talking about total economy, if they start consuming energy on a per capita basis at the same level as the Americans, I mean, commodity prices are going to go crazy. And the Indians are not even there yet. I mean, they're only starting to consume as much as the, as the Chinese. Just imagine what's going to happen to global economies when those two big giants start consuming like the rest of the world. There we go. Davi Roth, he's a lecturer at Gibbs, also an economist with some alternative views. <laughs>